Well, good afternoon and welcome to the first of our daily updates this week from Hamlin Rook Baptist. My name is Keith, one of the pastors at the church and Johnny, the other pastor, is going to be bringing a devotion from God's Word from 1 Samuel 28 in just a few moments. Just as we begin this week, just to let you know that we are going to be praying for the Islamic world beginning on Friday using this great resource called 30 Days of Prayer for the Muslim World. Many of you will know that Ramadan begins on Friday, a month of prayer and fasting for Muslims where they seek to encounter God. And it's our prayer that they would encounter the true and the living God through Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth and the life. So if you would like to pray intelligently at this time, uh, do connect through the 30 Days of Prayer website and be praying at this time. For any of you who are having any regulars, uh, Johnny is going to be producing his monthly newsletter and that's going to be in your inboxes on Wednesday. So do look out for that, Johnny's monthly newsletter on Wednesday. Over to Johnny now, he's going to bring a devotion from God's Word. As we close the book of 1 Samuel today, it's like watching the life of David and the life of Saul on a split screen. Saul's ministry as king had started so well. He was anointed by Samuel the prophet in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and he had loved the Lord. He had served the Lord. He had followed the Lord. But tragically as Saul gets older he grows proud, relying on his own strength, his own wisdom, his own might, his own power and gradually stopped listening to the prophet Samuel. Samuel was one who knew the Lord so well and spoke with prophetic insight, not just to Saul, the king of Israel, but to the whole nation of Israel. Saul is in a downward spiral here towards the end of 1 Samuel. And yet on the other side of the screen, here is David, the king elect, the one whom God has chosen. God has rejected the kingship of Saul and is making a way for David to come to the fore. But we learn one last lesson from the life of Saul. As an older man, he does not finish well. He has stopped listening to the Lord. And what jumps out to me in 1 Samuel 28 is that Saul, instead of listening to God, tragically listens to mediums and spiritists and Let's hear what happens in 1 Samuel 28. He goes to the witch at Endor because God has stopped speaking to him. There are severe consequences for Saul's sin. He tries to conceal his identity from her, but she realises that it is Saul. But she's able to summon the prophet Samuel to speak to Saul one last time. And consider the verdict of Samuel regarding the consequences of Saul's sin. 1 Samuel 28, 16. Samuel said, why do you consult me now that the Lord has turned away from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbours, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites. The Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will hand over both Israel and you to the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also hand over the army of Israel to the Philistines. Sadly, he finished so badly. There were consequences to Saul's sin. And as I observed that this morning, I thought about my life and your life if you're a Christian there are consequences to our sin and yet in the midst of the consequences to our sin we can find grace not through Saul who was a field king not through Samuel who was a great prophet in his day but through the greatest prophet who's ever lived and for the greatest king who's ever lived through Jesus if we confess our sin to him, Jesus promises us that he will forgive our sin and go on 
cleansing us from all unrighteousness. So I can I encourage you today that as we consider the fact that there are grave consequences to our own sin, there's still grace available. There's still hope. And one thing that struck me in 1 Samuel 28, it was that through Samuel the prophet, God says, I have taken the kingdom from you. In fact, Samuel says, the Lord has taken the kingdom from you and given it to David. And I considered how God would ultimately raise up his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would come through David's family tree. He would be the King of Kings. He would be the Lord of Lords. He would be the perfect King. He would be the perfect anointed one. And the Lord says something else about what this King would be like. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, the prophet Isaiah speaks about this ministry of King Jesus and yet our own sin and where the consequences of our sin would ultimately be laid. Isaiah says of Jesus 700 years before Jesus would come to earth, Isaiah 53, 6, we all like sheep, we've gone astray just like Saul. Each of us has turned to his or her own way. But the Lord has laid on him being Jesus. The iniquity, the sin, the law breaking, the consequences of our sin upon him. So could I encourage you today as we learn lessons from the end of Saul's life who did not finish well. He was a failed king. He was a rejected king. Let us learn that there are consequences to our sin, but there is still grace available to each one of us as a Christian or not a Christian through Jesus Christ, the perfect King and the perfect Lord of Lords. I'm going to hand back to Keith, who's going to pray for us today. Well, thanks, Johnny, for teaching so faithfully from God's Word. Let's now just pray as we close this time together. Father God, we come to you, the thrice holy God, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Father, we recognise afresh this morning that you cannot stand sin in their presence. Father, that you hate sin and that there are dire consequences for our sin and for the sins of many. Father, today we recognise your holiness afresh and as we compare ourselves to that, Father, we, we do see our unworthiness and our sin and our need of our Saviour. And Father, we thank you so much for sending Jesus to be the sin bearer, the one who would take away the sin of the world of all who would ask. So Father, we thank you for him. And as we seek to live this new life in Christ, Father, would you help us to get rid of sin? Father, would you help us to fight sin in our own lives, to be killing the sin that remains, that we would be holy just as you are holy? And do you pray even as we consider beginning to pray for the Islamic world on Friday. Father, we pray that many uh, will come to know Jesus Christ as their sin bearer in these days. That they wouldn't be waiting into the judgment day to see if good would outweigh bad, but they would see a marvel in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we hope we have a Good rest of the day and we look forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the week.